Hello and welcome everybody to another video on TJ Extras. It's another Dean Koontz review. And it's been a nice experience to go back to this author again. Even though I've said this in the previous review of Intensity, the author has gone downhill. He's not the same as he used to be. The once great author, no longer. Though he is still has a big place in my heart. Because I would say he's the reason why I actually got into reading. With Dean Coates, especially his Golden Age stuff, they are page turners. They just absorb you into the story. Quickly it sets off. The pacing is fantastic. They're so gripping. They're marvellous books. It, it's to, it pains me that this author has lost what he once had and what he built. Because... It took ages before he got his first bestseller because he wasn't doing very well back in the day. He was trying to find himself. He started with sci-fi. It wasn't really going very well. It started out with ace double releases in like 1968 into the 70s. And it just took about 12 years, somewhere around that time, before he got his first bestseller, which was Whispers, released in the 1980s. Actually, at the start of the 80s. And by then, he, should, he found his voice. He found who he was. Because eventually he um, incorporated thriller elements into his work. Then sometimes blended sci-fi and thriller together. And now, Kuntz with Whispers, he found his voice. And in the Golden Age, you can very rarely go wrong with Mr. Kuntz. Good old Kuntzy boy. He was very much flawless to me. And it's such a such a joy to go back to some of that work because it's been years when I read it. Today's Dean Koontz review is of The Voice of the Night. This one is just before the Golden Age actually starts. I would say this one, you know, he's getting there. He's very close. He's incorporated further elements into his work now. He's really getting there. Just need a bit more time before we get to Whispers and then right there. So this one is just behind Whispers, and I remembered really liking this one back in the day. I only read it once though. Intensity, I read it twice. So this is my second time reading the book, and my third Dean Koontz book for my re-experience. It was first Demon Seed, wasn't good enough to be reviewed. Intensity, now we're on to The Voice of the Night. Yeah, The Voice of the Night is one of the books which um, foreshadows his golden age coming up. This is a coming-of-age story. This book follows two characters, both 14-year-old boys, one called Colin and one called Roy. Colin's family moves to the town, but his parents are divorced. I'll get into that stuff a, a little later. But the main basic plot with The Voice of the Night is the interesting relationship between Colin and Roy because they are two very different people entirely. People that you would think would never get along or there would never be any form of friendship between these two people because they're very different with personality, how they think and who they are as people, as kids. Colin, he's a very shy, quiet uh, book reader. He's very naive and has quite low self-esteem and confidence. Whereas Roy... He's very popular around school, around the town. He's very confident. A lot of people look up to Roy and find him that they want to be just like him as an inspiration. And that's how Colin sees Roy. And he seems like a very nice guy, Roy. I know, a very nice kid. However, he has his horrible sadistic side to him where he is absolutely insane. He is messed up in the head. Now, my favourite thing, this is one of my favourite things about Voice of the Night. How the book begins, I just go, oh, okay, <laughs> going right into the story. Already, this character seems a little bit messed up in the head. And again, that's what I like about Koontz. I do. It just gets you straight into the story. With Stephen King, this doesn't apply to all his books, but sometimes I take a while for it to kick in. With Koontz, more applies to his Golden Age stuff. I've never had that problem. So this is how it starts. You ever killed anything? Roy asked. That's the beginning of the book. Have you killed anything? 
how this was handled with the subject of killing and Colin talking about it, saying like what what why are you bringing this up this was perfectly handled because how he was doing it it was doing it like it was elevating Roy and Colin were discussing about it where you know Roy starts out saying have you killed anything he says sure you have you like stepped on bugs you must have killed something and then he just keeps moving up and up and up and up then he's talking about rats then he's talking about cats then he's talking about dogs and how he's killed them like with a cat he was on about a cage then he was thinking about oh let's kill a dog and let's stab it multiple times you really do say to yourself, um, Colin, this friend of yours, I think he's a little bit nuts in the head. Now, Colin, he's very naive. He just doesn't see what Roy is actually saying to him. Because Colin just doesn't believe him. But it's just the way Roy puts it. It makes it feel like he is telling the truth and it's real. But Colin is just so naive. He just doesn't see it at the beginning. And he never stands up to Roy because he has low self-esteem issues. He's not confident. He never talks up against Roy because he's, he's a little bit scared of him, Roy. But still Colin sees him as a very good friend. A motivational boost a confidence booster and he would like to be like Roy you, you could definitely see but it's evident that Roy is psychologically manipulating Colin because uh, Roy wants Colin to be just like him and that links to the whole blood brother thing which this book is on about and later when the book progresses Colin does become more confident has higher self-esteem and the transition is done well, though I have a theory on that of why his personality changes due to a, a part of the book. Yeah, Roy is the villain. This is a 14-year-old. Again, both 14-year-old boys. I really do say to myself sometimes that if a 14-year-old is even capable of thinking this graphic, it's like reading that goddamn Richard Lehman book, I was thinking. Because he's he's evil, he's very manipulative, psychologically manipulating Colin, and yeah, he's pretty two-faced. Not to the not to Colin, however, because he's he's definitely showing his evil persona right in Colin's face. He's not hiding it; he's showing it, and he's just trying to tell that to Colin. But Colin's too naive to believe it, and the two-faced stuff. Well, how that comes into play? That is with his parents which is later on in the book. We can definitely see that they both have quite sad lies in their past. Something with Roy concerning her, sorry, his sister. I, I Again, I won't say what happens there, but of course that's for you to find out. And with Colin, but he doesn't really have very nice parents. They think they're good parents, but when you read the book, they're not. They're terrible parents. You can definitely see some animosity and tension between the two of them. Though I think that was a subplot which I think should have had a little bit more weight to it. It just wasn't really too much focused and I believe it should have. It just wanted to add a little bit extra to the book and you'd feel a little bit... You would sympathise more with Colin a lot more if that was focused on. But yeah, Colin's mother, she more cares about her own business and herself as a business woman than loving her own son. It seems like Colin's mother is never on his side. Never in the book. She thinks she's a good mother, but she's not. So she has this very big delusion. And it's sad, it is. This is a very upsetting book in tone. And Colin's father is just a drunk asshole, pretty much. Very arrogant. The way he talked to um, Colin at one point in the book when it was like the fishing part, it, it was uh, terrible. Koontz is seriously good when it comes to portraying, so sorry, executing good and evil characters. He is so good at that. And I think it's a skill which... Um, 
I don't see done very well in books which just you know new books coming up it just um it's just not as well done really and Koontz is just so good at it because when he does a, a good character you know you actually care for that character and that's the whole point of it really you care you want to see how this character ends up within the story you want to follow his path you want to know and with this evil character even though I actually sympathized with Roy to an extent, he's still messed up in the head and you want to um you want him to get what he truly deserves. Yeah, I think execution of characters, good and evil, sometimes I think is lacking in some books. It's just not as well executed. And what makes it even more effective that he's just a fourteen year old kid. St an excellent villain, though, though he's definitely not on the levels of, oh my word, Edgar Vez in intensity because he's like a whole different villain. Yeah, I do have a theory on these two characters. Again, Koontz loves to insinuate something within a story. He never, he never truly states it, but he, he insinuates it. He tries to give it, like, he tries to tease you the ramifications of the story and I got this with intensity with China and Vez being two sides of the same coin they share something this is this pseudo bond they have and what that was their past that they had horrible past with China it was abuse and the only comfort she gets is just uh, with her friend's family so she's had terrible stuff in her past and Vez has had terrible stuff in his past, more sick twisted, and something terrible happened that he witnessed or he committed. I'm not going to say what it is, and he was only eight years old. I like this uh, writing style that Koontz uh, goes for, insinuating something, just teases the ramification of the story. And now, this is my own uh, theory on the story because it definitely has this slight supernatural part to it teased hinted at it's not too um high it's not like a major element in the story considering the title is called the voice of the night a very supernatural like paranormal title though it's not a big element in the story though i tried to work in a theory to make it quite a big element and it links to what's on the front cover Kingsman house. And actually before I get into that I want to state a little bit about Colin and Roy in the early stages before they actually go into the Kingsman house. Roy definitely controls Colin through fear and manipulation. With a part of watching a porn film Colin felt really um, just awkward and he just didn't want to watch it and Roy's you know talking very sexual and whatnot and Roy was forcing Colin to talk how he would but Colin doesn't want to and then Roy gets pretty aggressive and you can again you feel sorry for Colin because he definitely wants a friend and he sees Roy as a friend but Roy's just so sick twisted and again you just want to smash your head against the wall that Colin's just so un naive and doesn't stand up against himself anyway let's move to the Kingsman part when Colin and Roy go up to the house, Colin has this feeling of being watched, that there's someone in the darkness. And then he insinuates the voice of the night, but he can hear something talking to him. Just this really quiet voice. And Royce has said that he's been to the house before. I believe the house inside lingers dark negative energy because there was a terrible event which happened in the Kingsman house which involved the Kingsman family. I won't go too much into it but all I'll say is Mr. Kingsman killed his entire family and I'm going to say how we went insane, what were the ramifications to it or if it was, um, it was said to be maybe a brain tumour, did he just go absolutely batshit crazy? Why did he kill all of his family? 
you know, I'm not going to say that stuff. But yeah, there was, it was explained, but there's blood just everywhere. Heads decapitated and then um, put on the wall. Disgusting stuff like that. And Roy first read about the legend of the Kingsman house in an article because he was always very interested about the history of the town, murders, killings and suicides. And he decided to go up to the Kingsman house. Now, I believe that before he met Colin, and this might have been maybe a year ago, that he didn't have evil tendencies back then. He was um, still Roy. Very confident, has a very strong personality, and you know, very popular, but he didn't have this evil side to him. And when he entered the house, that's when the negative energy completely got into his mind and psychologically manipulated him. The origin of the dark energy is either what affected Mr. Kingsman, or it's Mr. Kingsman himself and his family that he completely slaughtered. Their spirits are still there. And yeah, I think a main element of this story, The Voice of the Night, is psychological manipulation. Because Colin is being manipulated by Roy to be just like him. The whole blood, bro the whole blood brother thing. He's really forcing Colin to be just like him. Then I think there's something even more to it. That Roy is being psychologically manipulated by what has got into his mind when he went into the house. And this proves my theory what happens at the end of the book and what happens to Colin within a scene where in one part he sort of acted like how Roy would think and that suggests to me that some of the energy within the house got onto Colin's mind and after that scene that's where he became more confident and more strong and independent and I believe that's because of the energy within the house. Yeah quite of a big um, out there theory with this one, but I like to do that with books. But yeah, the pacing is absolutely flawless. Fantastic. Always a page turn. You always expect a page turner with the Golden Age stuff by Koontz. It just fly by. I read this in two days, three hour sittings on each day, so six hours. So six hours. It was just a really fast, engaging read. However, it's definitely not on the lines of intensity for me. Because it definitely has its problems. And it's not a perfect book. I definitely enjoy it. But it's just... Um, maybe if I read all my Coons book again, will this stand in the top 10? I'm not too sure. Though, it's definitely a good one. It is divided into three parts. Part one is the main majority of the book. And part two is like 70% into the book. There's part two. That is all of part one. That's part two. Part two is like 30 pages or so. And part three is there. And that's how long part... Yeah, <laughs> that's how long part three is. So, not that long. Very weirdly structured in parts. Where part one is like 70% of the book. Then a little bit dedicated to... And then 30% dedicated to part two and three shared. 15% each pretty much, so... Odd how it's structured. Yeah, part one was very enjoyable and sets up the story very well. Though part two and three is where we come into a bit of a problem. Realistically, it should have got more suspenseful than part one. Either on the same lines or even better. And realistically, as I said, it should have been even better. Though the suspense didn't live up to part one. And by that point, it was quite inconsistent to me. And hmm... Now this isn't really a bad thing when it comes to books, but it's always nice that a book can have its twists, has it, have its surprises and unpredictability. And it's not like the main thing I would I see in books. It is predictable. You can work out from start to finish how it would work out. It doesn't take a it doesn't it's not rocket science. You can work it out easy. I personally feel that the book could have gone into areas that may have been surprising for a few readers. Yeah, it's just a little too predictable. Again, not the worst thing in the world for a book to be, in my opinion. But it's always nice to have some twists. And it does. It does have its twists. But more to the actual main plot and how the story plays out is where I would like to have like a little bit of unpredictability to it. Again, not a main thing I 
seeing books. The thing I more care about is the enjoyment factor of the book. And if I, the characters are likeable and the story flows well. Those things are more important than unpredictability. Again, I don't think this book will be for everyone because it's a little bit disturbing and, yeah, upsetting in tone. It doesn't feel like a Coons book to me. It feels like a Richard Lehman book I'm reading. Because the description, the gore, the discussion on sex. This feels like a Richard Lehman book. I don't think it's for everyone. And I personally feel that if I was speaking to someone who wants to get into Coons. Good old Coonsy boy. And he or she wanted recommendations. I don't think I would bring this one up. I would rather say Intensity, and from memory of my favourite Coons books back in the day in school, Twilight Eyes, Dragon Tears, Phantoms, Lightning, Watchers, Strangers, I would rather go into that area and not say this one. Would I recommend it later on if the person's enjoying Coons? Yeah, maybe. Now the ending, people are hit and miss on this when it comes to the ending. I see people that like it. It wasn't what they expected. It's definitely what I didn't expect because I couldn't remember it because it's been like seven years when I last read it. And I liked it. It definitely, it definitely um, surprised me. I just didn't think it would go this way. Though knowing Koontz with his endings, they usually go for the same direction. But I just didn't think it would be done like this. So, it was quite surprising. It's very, very rare you will find a Koontz book where the ending is incredibly bleak. It goes for bleak writing, but the ending, it doesn't usually end in a bleak way. Though he has done it on a few occasions. Yeah, I don't mind it and it explains who the character of Colin is like. And again, what Roy actually does in the story definitely insinuates to me of the whole theory of mine that dark energy was actually controlling him and it's not his own evil tendencies it's something which has manipulated his mind again only a theory and only what i suggest the ramifications of this book is overall it's a very enjoyable book again i don't think it's for everyone because it's very upsetting in tone but mainly because it's a very disturbing book it's a little sexist as well and yeah it does have its problems I personally feel the plot of Colin's parents should have been more explored with their animosity. Yeah, the story was predictable. Again, not the worst thing a book can be. It's nice to have really a straightforward book with the story. And it does have some twists. The ending I didn't expect, though I would personally prefer more actual story twists. as something like really shocking happened. Is it more flowed of how I wanted it to go? And, you know, that's fine. It's okay. But my biggest problem was actually part two and three, but the suspense wasn't on the lines compared to part one, nor did it improve. It just went downhill and went a little bit inconsistent. And on the other hand, had some great enjoyable moments, tense scenes, perfect pacing, and a very strong page turner. It took two days to read, so, you know, I must have enjoyed it. It gets an 8 out of 10. It's a good book by Koontz. Again, it's not in the golden age. It's just um, it's just before it for me. Just behind whispers. But it definitely foreshadows that Koontz is going into the right area. But he's really getting there. As I said, 8 out of 10. A very fast and enjoyable read. So that was my review of The Voice of the Night. I would say you would definitely like it if you are into uh, Richard Lehman though. Though, when it comes to me with Richard Lehman, I don't like to read too many of his books at once. Want to see another Koontz review? I recently reviewed Intensity, one of my favourite books of all time. Very positive review. Go and check that out. The next Koontz book on the list to read is The Mass. Now, I do not remember a thing about this book besides the ending. That's the only thing I remember from this book. So this one, more going into it blind. I won't say what I thought of the ending because I'll just leave it into the review. If it's good enough though. 
Because if it's not good enough, I'm not going to bother reviewing it. Because Demon Seed wasn't good enough, I couldn't be bothered to review it. So this is the next one to review. If it's good enough, I will review it. So thanks for watching, and of course, have a good one.